Hi guys, I hope you're enjoying your weekend. We got the Bills game coming up in about an hour and a half, but I just wanted to make a quick video because in the last video for the email tutorial, I made one using a Microsoft Outlook email account and I realized that you guys don't have those accounts and I was not expecting you to make a new one. So I just wanted to make a new video. Um, I'm accepting Wits mail or if you send it to my Williamsville email address, either way you wanna go about this email tutorial is fine. But um, just to go through Wits mail with sending an email, um, I have Wits pulled up right now. And just on a side note, um, the teacher landing page, if you click right here, you can find all of your teachers in the list of assignments for the week. So that's just um, could be helpful for organization as we move into remote learning next week. But to send a Wits mail, you're going to go to the Wits mail tab. And to start a new email, you're going to click where it says new and it brings you to this window. Now, one nice thing about Witzmail is it's easy to find anybody within the district that you want to reach out to because when you click two, it brings you to like a Rolodex that you can search through and find your different teachers, other students, anyone that you're looking for. Mine probably looks a little bit different in teacher view because I have a couple other options. I can reach out to parents. I could reach out to entire class periods. It makes it a little bit easier for me to find students. But um, if I was going to send an email to all of you, I'd highlight all of my classes. But if you wanted to look somebody up, you could use the search engine. And I'm a staff member, so I'm going to click staff. And I'll click North High. And I found myself, so I'm going to send my practice email to myself. So there I am. And then if you click me, I've been added to your email. Now, if you were going to CC somebody, this means that you just want to copy them to the email. Um, you're not necessarily sending the email to them, but they will get notified that you've sent an email to somebody else. So I'm not going to CC anyone here. The next important thing is adding a subject. So the subject is the first thing that your teachers are going to see when you send them an email. So if you have a question and you write question here, they're going to see it and know that they you probably need a response rather quickly because maybe you're working on an assignment or something like that. So I'm just going to subject this one um, example email. One mistake students often make when sending an email is they write their entire email in the subject bar and you don't want to do that because subject bar is rather short. So if your whole email is written right there when your teachers click on it, they're not really going to see what you're trying to say. Also, because it's just a one lined thing, you can't properly fit a correct email format into a subject bar. So after you've subjected your email, you're going to move down below and this is where you actually type your email. So if you were able to take anything from the last video, aside from the Microsoft Outlook account, you were able to see the proper format for an email. So they should start with a greeting to whoever you're sending the email to. Um, so it might just be something like, hi, Ms. Rice, whoever you're addressing the email to. You hit enter, and then you can begin actually typing your message. So I'm just going to say this is a sample email. This is where you are going to type your message. And in the lesson, I included a couple of things that you could email me about um, if you want to, if you're looking for something, if you want to tell me about your weekend or how virtual learning is going for you, what you did this summer. I don't care what you send your email about, I'm not grading it on the content. I'm just grading it on the format and that you know how to send a proper email moving forward, especially since we're going 100% remote. Our main forms of communication are going to be email and our off office hours. So after you're done with your email, enter again, and it's good etiquette to end with a send off. So something like, thank you for work, um, have a good day, something like that. And then importantly, end with your name at the end. So especially as I'm still learning your names, if you don't put an email here, or your name here, email addresses are pretty much your last names. And I'm still working on first names, 
So having your name included in the end helps. Um, helps us get to know your names, especially because I can't see you in person every day. And that's proper format for an email. That's about it. There also is the option to attach things to your email. If you're trying to submit an assignment this way or something like that, you could attach it here. There's an option to send it, a copy of the email to yourself so that you can see what it looks like. And there's also an option for a read receipt, and this just notifies you when the sender has read your email. So when you're done, the last step is to hit send email. And if you wanted to take another look at it, you can look in the sent items. It'll show you that. But since I sent the email to myself, you can see it popped up right here. There's our subject. If you click on that, there's the sample, sample email that I just sent. So that's about it. Sample emails are due by 11.59 Monday night. A lot of you have already sent them to me. But if you were a little bit confused by my first video, I just wanted to make another video going over this with you. So I hope you're enjoying your weekend and go Bills.